It wasn't encouraging. I didn't save, I hurt. I didn't uplift, I tore down. And God is in the business of reconciliation. He's in the business of restoration and restoring and building and repairing breaches. Mm. I want to say to the body of Christ, what? we need to get on our face and pray because there is something getting ready to happen that we need to be very prayerful about. I don't think this, I know this in the Holy Ghost, that we need to pray for Indonesia. Indonesia needs our prayers. Pray for Indonesia. Okay? I also want to say, something in the next two weeks, possibly next 11 to 14 days, is getting ready to happen very, very unique in this country. There's a transformation of mind getting ready to take place. And I'm telling you this by the Spirit of God. What? That in the next two weeks, everything mm. is about to shift in this country. Mm. All of you black folk are happy because Biden got the presidency and Trump is out. Your confidence is not in these leaders. Mm. Your, co <clears throat> Your confidence is not in, in, in these leaders. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, in this country. My head hurts. <laughs> How y'all doing? Y'all all right? Uh oh. Hello, everybody. So all this. <coughs> this is all the. <coughs> Hello, everybody. So. <coughs> <coughs> Hold on. Me, 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 me. Hello, my soul, soul, John Shaw. I'm he. It is the evening edition. Brian, uh, ba baby, how y'all is? Come on in. Well, wa water's water's fine. Water water's fine. Water's fine. Brian Kai. Uh, uh, water's fine. Water's fine. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all interrupted me. I was I was listening to the the right Reverend Prophetess Brian Brian Kai. <laughs> hips, hips, don't you start. Don't, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yes, Joyce, the Electoral College, they vote uh, in about a week or so. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, I need to ask y'all a question. Okay. Can I just ask y'all one, one quick question? All right. Um, <laughs> Amber, I need you to stop. Amber, I'm. I'm need you to. I need you to stop. Look, look, look. You see, y'all see all those laughs? That's Amber. <laughs> I hate her. <laughs> all right, now listen. I want to ask y'all a question. The 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 title is. Are Christians easily, easy to manipulate? All right. So I want to know from y'all, are indeed Christians easy to manipulate? And why? Huh? <laughs> Sherry, so I'm sick of these lying prophets. Uh, Sherry. <laughs> Sherry Tanya. <coughs> <coughs> you and Amber need to go in the corner. So you're saying yes, Ruth, Chester, yes, Majoria, uh, yes, uh, Tawana, uh, yeah, yes, uh, Ruth, uh, Zoe, yes, yes, Linda. <laughs> Zoe says <said>, sheep. <laughs> yes, sheep. Okay, yeah, uh, Bronnie said yes, yes. All right. Bronnie Scott, ain't no ball game on? Did they cancel all the games tonight? You you here? Your birthday was yesterday. 
the day before yesterday. Sorry. You should be still celebrating. <laughs> Michael Weatherspoon, bless you to you. Happy Thanksgiving later on. Uh-huh. Uh, get the flock out. <laughs> All right. So is it so y'all saying yes. All right. Why is the church so easily manipulated? Why male and female? I do know that there are more women in the church than there are men. Yes, there is a reason why. And I talked about it on many occasions. So, yes. But the men are following stuff like this as well. Now. James Campbell says no because God will keep us Yes he will keep us but y'all are still Easily manipulated even though God can keep let me ask you Okay I need a Bible I need to find a Bible hold on Okay This is my Bible it is what I say it is <laughs> Alright now Now The problem, the problem with uh, this book in my hand is not the book. It's the people in whom the book was written to. You understand? Now, there are two kinds of people in this book. This is a story. About God and his people. Okay. Now. But it's told by Jewish people. You see how thick this is? This Bible is? It's Jewish writing. From Jewish men and women. Understand? It's all God breathed. Okay. So. Unto us the child is born. Jews. To Jews. 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 Jews, okay, wrote this. <clears throat> now, Gentiles was hanging around. They was always there. And they were being, they got close to the fire as God was dealing with his people, the Jews. All right, salvation then goes to who first? Can somebody put it in the comments? Salvation goes to who first put it in the comments because your answer will tell me something about your understanding of this book mm. mm -hmm. okay Zoe said to the Jew Tam said to the Jew I'm going in and out. It's, 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 it's heaven. It's, it's that time of month for my mic. All right. Ava says to the Jews. So. Uh, if salvation goes to the Jews. First. Okay. And then. To the Gentiles. Later. Now the Bible says. The, 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 the Greeks. The Romans pretty much. Them later. All right. So it goes to the Jew first. Why did salvation go to the Jew first? All right. This is Bible class, y'all. I know this ain't Thursday, but I need to get the Bible as much as I can because we keep falling for this mess. Salvation went to the Jew first. That's what the Bible says. And then to the Gentile. But why did it go to the Jew first? Hmm. All right, Tamara. You in Bible study today? Mm hmm. <laughs> Tamara said because they wrote it. <laughs> that actually makes a lot of sense. Believe it or not, it actually makes more sense than you think. Okay, Belinda says they were God chosen people. Chosen people because okay. Because Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of the law. 
<laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. These are great answers. According to the scripture, he was sent to them first. He went to the Jew first. But why? Well, you got to take Marlon's answer and Amber's answer and put it together. And then put the rest of y'all's answer there because they are God's chosen. Well, we all are God's chosen, aren't we? Didn't he not choose us? But did he choose us right away? Okay, so Jesus came on the scene and he sent them out two by two. Whose house did Jesus send his boys to? And whose house did he told them not to go to? That's going to give you your answer too. Cam said family first. <laughs> mm -hmm. God's providential plan. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So Jesus sent them out two by two. To whose house? Were there not Samaritans living in that area? Were there not Philistines living in that area? Was not Egypt not far from there? All right. Wasn't Gentiles in that area? Who did Jesus send the two to out to, though? Hmm? Can y'all tell me? Who did he say? Whose house to go to? Thank you, Karen Bell. I know that the stuff is coming in. Y'all probably typed it, but it comes in a little delayed. Yes, Karen Bell got it. Ava's got it. Yes. There you go, Belinda. Yes. He says, go only to the house of Israel. Only to them. Only to them. If they were God chosen, why did what? They turned him over to the Romans because they were under Roman rule. You just couldn't do anything you wanted to up under submission under a, a, a nation. But many times they turned, they tried to trick Jesus and test him by using other tactics to get to him as well and to free themselves. So they tried to wash their hands and then the brother, the Roman man says, I... I, I wash my hands too. <laughs> I find no fault in them. Mm -hmm. What? Are you you eating late dinner? <laughs> the water. Okay. So he says, go only to the household of Israel. All right. Why? Because Jesus came for them first. Not only he came to them first, and he came to them to fulfill all of those laws from the first. Law of Moses to the last. Jesus fulfilled it to them. Where do we see the story? We see it in Joseph. The Joseph story is a, a prototype of Jesus Christ and his brothers. Mm hmm. Yes. Okay. So. Jesus was 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 born of a virgin Mary blah 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 all that was prophesied to the the prophets all right so he comes on the scene and for 33 years he hang out with his brothers yes he's 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 uh healing uh, uh, other Gentiles or what have you but notice much of that stuff was dealing with the Jew he stayed in that area why did not Jesus uh, leave the that the Jewish areas and go into back into Egypt and and Asia Minor's and all these other places. Why did he only hang out in that that territory that area? The only time he went to Egypt was was the time when he was born and they had to go hide him. But as he got older, he stayed within the area where the law was practiced for thirty three years. Why? Because he came for them. He said, go to the household of Israel, only to them. Thank you, Leslie. They were his covenant people. That's very important. Okay. 
Then what happened? So he's, he's preaches sermons, and the sermons that he's preaching uh, in Ma- Matthew 24, he's talking about a certain period of time. Notice Jesus never really referred to the rapture. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Trouble, 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 trouble. Jesus was preaching on the end times. Matthew chapter 24. And guess where he starts? He said, it says, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. He's talking about the temple. Did the temple matter to the Gentiles? No. That is very reason why that call of gift would never be revoked. Ooh, come on, Tam. That's it. That's it. And then he, he keeps talking. Jesus, keep talking to Matthew 24. Notice what he never says. You got to pay attention to what he says. Then he talks about, uh, he says, and uh, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him again. Privately, tell us, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus' response was not, I'm going to show up in the sky and the clouds are going to break and my people are going to be raptured up, caught up to meet in the air and they shall be with me and the the lamb's supper of the the, the lamb, all right, and we're going to blah, blah, blah. Nope. No rapture here. He didn't deal with it. Why? Because Joseph, Joseph, Joseph was in Egypt. Jesus is in a, is in a type of Egypt at this time. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, 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 hydraulic. Oh, 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 oh. I, I, I felt you, man. I felt you right there. I, I, man, you, you, you're hot, man. Whoo, you're burning up. Uh, teaching them how to be prepared for the future for them as apostles in the earth. Yes, yes. Now, but Karen Bell, watch this though, because their apostolic ministries happened before Jesus started talking in verse 4. Matthew chapter 24, the first Three verses, sure, apostolic journey. By the time he get to verse four, no more. Don't need you apostles. Remember when Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that prophecies will cease and all these other things after that will cease? You don't need it? Well, Verse 4, then Jesus starts talking about the tribulation. Well, the apostolic, the apostles already did the work before the tribulation. So why would Jesus skip everything leading up to the tribulation? That means the rapture as well. Why? Because he came here not for you directly. He came here for his brothers directly because he's got to settle a matter with his brothers. Just like Joseph had to settle a matter with his brothers. Are y'all still with me? Is this making sense to anybody out there? Because if it ain't, that's why you are easily deceived by prophets. So when we get to verse four, Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you, too many of y'all are being deceived by these men who come back after false prophecies or vague prophecies, lukewarm prophecies.
okay? Cute little broad prophecies. And be careful of them. They're going to come back and find things. And let you see it and say, see? Remember last week I told y'all you can make the Bible say anything and it will make sense to the feeble-minded? Remember when I said that? Hmm? But God allowed Israel to be uh, blinded. He will... Yeah, yes. Come on, hips, hips. Come on. If you don't preach this with me, preach it with me. Black Christians, white Christians, Asian Christians, Latino Christians are Christians easier to manipulate. Yeah, this is a very broad question. Just my two pennies. Well, add two pennies on to that, Leah. <laughs> add two more pennies. Prophets deceive their own selves. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. So let's finish this class, okay? Jesus started talking right away about the tribulation. He never mentions he never mentions the rapture. It wasn't for him to mention. He says to them, don't worry about the Gentiles. I'm going to send someone for them. Who did he send, y'all? Can y'all tell me who did he send? Hmm? Antibody. Antibody got antibodies. Antibody. Tell me. Who did Jesus send then? Huh? Anybody? Oh. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. Y'all are saying Paul. You're right. Here's the problem with Paul. Okay. See if I can find find what's going on here. Here's the problem with Paul. Is this. If you ever walk up to a Jew or a Hebrew Israelite or maybe a, a black Muslim and you mention Paul's name, they might cuss you out. Or anybody who's a law practicer, they just might cuss you out. And what they would do is they will pin Jesus against Paul and say, Paul don't supersede Jesus. Because if Jesus didn't mention it and Paul is mentioning it, then I'm going to go with Jesus. That's the fight. That's the deception. And that's the ignorance. If I'm sending someone who will speak for me, then I'm speaking. Even when Paul was laying down particular laws and he was giving advice, he says, I, Paul, is saying this to you. This is my opinion. Then he will say, but I asked the Lord for permission and he granted it to me. Or he would say, this is not me saying it. This is God saying it. He was specific on his instructions. Do you understand? So Jesus sent Paul to speak to the Gentiles. Jesus said, I ain't got time. I don't have but this much time on the earth because like the sacrificial lamb that I'm getting ready to be, I've got to do it within the right time. And people who say, I don't care when Jesus died, what time he died, it doesn't matter. The reason why it doesn't matter to you, because you don't know the Bible. Number two, you're not a Jew. Number three, he didn't come for you directly, so it doesn't matter to you. But to the Jew, him dying on that day and at that hour mattered more than just him. It mattered more than him being born. The moment he died, because if he had died five minutes before or five minutes after, it would not have made a difference. The Old Testament and all of the laws would not have been fulfilled in Christ if he had died the, the day before. That's why he kept escaping from them when they tried to kill him. He would disappear. He would say, Shh, don't tell nobody what I did for you. Be quiet. And they couldn't shut their mouths. Why? He had a plan. 
And the plan of salvation was calculated, but it had to be calculated to the Jew first. Is this making sense to anybody? So Jesus' rhetoric, you may want to call it, his talks, his parables, you know, and his, his instructions and all things he did was so that the Jew couldn't understand it first. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why is all these prophets deeply wrapped up? <laughs> Sherry, 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 you all right. Has anybody ever told you that? <laughs> you all right. Paul was the great gladiator and liberator, yes, on assignment from the Lord to admonish the work of his son to pitch the two against each other is ignorant. Ignorant. And this is why even the book of James uh, is called the epistle of straw. Martin Luther said he, he didn't like James because it seemed like it, James was going against Paul. Because Paul says you're justified by faith alone, out of your mouth, and confess with your heart, you're saved. James says, show me your, your, your faith and I'll show you some works. What? I, don't, I shouldn't have to do anything to be saved. That's not what James was saying. He says, a person who's saved will do works. He didn't say a person uh, need to get saved. In order to get saved, you got to do works. That's what Martin Luther thought he was saying. You got to do some work in order to maintain your salvation. And But James was clear. He said, no. You... You're saved, so you automatically do good things. Your conduct is always pure and good and righteous because you're saved. You don't get baptized to get saved. You're saved, so you want to be baptized. You were taught wrong. So I'm glad that a hundred of y'all showed up for the Sir Walter Jones Bible class, the school of the prophets. <laughs> Glad y'all showed up. With your permission, we're always Paul's words. Yes, these modern day dudes. <laughs> Michelle Carter. Yes, y'all better preach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jonah died in that big fish three days. And yeah, Karen, come on, Karen Bell. Yes, a virtual Mars Hill with the Thoreau Jones show. Come let us reason together as we dissect and discuss the word. You are <laughs> Leah Joy. I like that name though. Leah Joy. Yeah. We are gullible because of the prosperity gospel too. And we also feel. Yeah. Come on. Yes. Mia Pratt. Now guess what document is very Calvinistic. Y'all know what document is a Calvinistic doc uh, document? Do I have it here? I, I, I have it in miniature form. Uh, I thought I had it. I do have it, but it's not right here. It's the Constitution. White evangelicals made the Constitution a Christian document. Ain't nothing Christian about it. It's Calvinist. <laughs> and it's deist. Matter of fact, they made sure they wrote the Constitution as carefully as possible so that it would not be a Christian document. Anybody could say God. But the Jew dropped the ball. It were to be the priests for the Gentile because of their, yes, Leslie. Leslie, you're preaching. Mm-hmm. You're preaching. Uh, the two examples James used should be in in instructive. Abraham was uh, about to kill his son and The Mew Taylor's here, y'all. Mm-hmm. I may add four cents to your digital declaration. <laughs> Leah Joy. Leah, Leah, you're bringing me joy tonight. All right? Okay? So, matter of fact, let me prove it to you. In my Bible, and maybe your Bible, when you got the subtitle at the top, uh, when Jesus kind of changes the, the pericopes and what have you, he goes, moves to another subject. Now, look at this. All right? Uh, you see what that word right there say? Up there? 
uh, it, it might not be that clear, but it says tribulation. That's verse 4. You see that? Tribulation. That's where he starts. Jesus starts his sermon to the Jews right at tribulation. He don't waste no time on nothing leading up to it. Why? You know why? Look who he was talking to. He says, let me tell you about the tribulation because that's when I'm coming back to settle a deal, a matter with you. So the tribulation is not for you. And for many of you who are going to be left behind, you just watching the floor show. You actually uh, are cast a stowaways. You're stowaways. If you're going to be in the tribulation, you're stowaways. You're crashing the party. So now God got to come and, and rescue you somehow. <laughs> you got to be beheaded. You don't belong over there. The tribulation is for the Jew. Now, the tribulation is for the Jew. That's why he sent the 144,000. Ain't no Gentiles in there. There you go, Amber. He, he says, I got to set things right with y'all. Because you're not listening during the, to, during the dispensation of grace. The Jews are not listening right now. They're blind and deaf right now. The average Jew is an unbeliever, agnostic or atheist. Go over to Jerusalem right now, and most of them don't believe. And, and God says, I got to settle this matter with them. I got to settle up. So what does he do? He starts with the tribulation first. He says, here's what's getting ready to happen. And woe to you women who are having babies at the time. And this, 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 uh, this son of perdition, this desolation, this, this, this false prophet, this antichrist is going to come and sit in your temple and say that he's God. And you're going to believe him. He says, you need to flee. Go running on the mountains or flee to the hills. Because it's not going to be that great for you. As, as in the days of Noah. Why did he pick Noah's day? Mm. Very important. As in the day of Noah. The days of Noah. They were doing a whole lot of stuff. During that time. Well. We can break even that down because there are people here who are fighting over pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, amillennialist, preterist, all these words y'all hear, but you may not know what that is, okay? It makes a lot of sense. Jesus was helping us out here. So Noah and his eight, okay, and, and, his, and his boys and their wives, it is, okay, got on the boat. God didn't snatch them out of the world and then flooded the world. God put them in the boat and preserved them in the boat. And I'm sure the boat tossed to and fro. They felt the waves of the water, but they were preserved through it. Do y'all understand? So Jesus is saying again, as in the days of Noah, I'm about to do it again. But this time, I ain't using water. So what about the Gentiles? Well, he ain't putting us in a boat so that we can feel the waves. How do we know that? Well, let's go to the book of Revelation. And he talked about the churches of Asia. Mm -hmm. Chapter 1, chapter 2. He gave those seven churches. And these churches had a certain age, meaning some of these have passed and some are to be. 
Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea. He saved the Laodicean church for last. He put the Philadelphia church before the Laodicean church. Why? Because through the Philadelphia church, that's when the church will be removed and raptured up. How do we know? Because you got to read the Bible in Greek and Hebrew. English has messed us up. So chapter 3, verse 10 says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Not I will put you and preserve you in the hour of temptation. He's, uh, temptation. He says, I will keep you from it, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. When you read this in the Greek, the word is ek, which means I'm going to pull you out of. If he had used the word dia, that means preservation. So, Noah was dia in the boat. He preserved him while the water shook. With us, he's going to ek us out of the world. So do we won't feel or hear. Because while we with while we with the Lord, and we it ain't no crying and weeping and gnashing of teeth, nothing like that. No, we're in the we're in the safety net, net of God, and we will be just like Him with glorified bodies. No flesh can dwell in heaven, so it's glorified. We're up out of here, snatched. So then Jesus in Matthew twenty four says, "All right, now that they're gone, man, I couldn't wait. It, I, th I didn't think they would ever leave here. Whew, I'm glad they're gone. Now let me tell y'all." Because I got to settle a score with y'all during the tribulation. And that's why he started his story right there. And after the Philadelphia church snatched up, then in walks the Laodicean church. Well, guess what's going to happen to them? And look at all of the things he said about the Laodicean church. It makes sense. If you didn't know this, you know it now, but you can know this and stop listening to these prophets prophesy about politics. And which president is going to die? Like the, the, the prophet that came on here talked about George Bush and pray for who did he say back then when he was when he was listening to a witch? He was bringing up some Hollywood actors and actresses. R really? Is that what the church is all about? I ain't saying God don't care about Hollywood actors and actresses. He, he, he wants all men to be saved. But you wasted my time in a sermon to, to tell me uh, that Oprah prayed for her money because it's drying up and, and Stepman moved out the house. That, I came here to receive a word from the Lord. I just, I just, what is your stance on, uh, on the, of the rapture in time dreams on YouTube? You were right too much arguments on the time frame of the rapture. I honestly believe it is either pre-trip. Yes, Mia, uh, I'm a pre -tri I'm a pre-trip man. I, matter of fact, I just mentioned it here. Yeah. Basketball scores and all manner of mess. Let me, yes, <laughs> I'm a pre-trip man. Tribulation is not for you. This is a, this is God selling a score with his brothers. That's what the tribulation is all about. The 144,000 is none of y'all. It's the 12 tribes of Israel. That's it. And God is going to preserve them through this thing. They won't be harmed.
Why? Because God is settling a score. He's got to save them. And he's got to show himself strong. That's why he chose his brothers. Chapter 7. How do we know? You got to read it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we're getting the heck out of here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. I've had three rapture dreams. It's very much real. All right, hips. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, sadly, this has been taught in many sanctified churches. Uh, oh, how sad. Yeah, this or uh, this, uh, or this wasn't. Priscilla. <clears throat> okay. The 12 tribes of Israel, he says, of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000 of the of uh, the tribe of uh, Reuben, 12,000 of the tribe of Gad. And then he, he mentions Asher and he mis, mis, mention, mentions <laughs> Naphtali and Manasseh and, 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 and Simeon. He goes on and on. One tribe is missing. One tribe is gone. They didn't make it. And I have my theories on why he's not in here. The prophets don't teach this. You, hips, you saw what it, we, you saw. <laughs> you saw what they did there. All right. The prophets don't teach this. Let's see what happened to that last guy. Why is he not a part of it? I believe his name is Dan. Can we go to trap uh, verse uh, chapter seven of Revelation? Do y'all see Dan in this tribe? Hmm. Oh, the teaching that the church members that are left behind will have one final chance at beheading. Well, let me let me let me let me mention that. Um, let me talk about that. Uh, Dan's father prophesied to all his sons Jacob prophesied to all his sons in Genesis chapter 49 when you get to Dan he says Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel Dan shall be a serpent by the way an adder in the path that biteth the horse heels so that his rider shall fall backwards I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Hmm. Something's up there. My book says Dan was a small tribe, but a little serpent, by the way, can destroy a mighty cavalry. Dan, unfortunately, did not live up to its blessing of being a mighty warrior. Judges 1 and 34 and seems to have had little interaction with the other tribes in the latter, la, later years. Judges 5 and 17. And you know who was the Danite? He went to a female barbershop, got his hair cut. Y'all know who that is? They didn't make it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They, they ain't make it. Let me see. Let me see. Did my do my footnote say? Oh, let, wait. Do my my footnote say anything about Dan? Oh, Black Dan, Dan and Dan. Oh, Black Danny, Dan and Dan. Dan, Dan. Okay. Um. I don't. He gone. <laughs> Samson. Yes. Samson was the Danite. Ain't that some ice cream or some yogurt? Danites. All right, so let's go back. Let's go back to Egypt, live on top of the world. So Jesus started talking about the tribulation. Then he says something that confused people. He, he, he says, one is in the field. The two is, are there, in, there are two in the field. Let me see. Uh, and, um, well, let's read that. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you 
and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Notice he says, and my apostles will go forth and witness to many. Now, these prophets during the tribulation going to pop up. So this is a precursor. What y'all seeing with these lying prophets? They're going to really turn it up during the tribulation. And because iniquity shall bound, shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for the witness unto the nations. And to the, all right. Now, when Jesus is talking about the kingdom, he's usually referring to Jews. Jesus preaching is on the kingdom. Apostle Paul's preaching is not much about the kingdom. Uh oh. Uh oh. The Apostle Paul preaches on the body of Christ. Jesus preaches on the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Did y'all notice that? Anybody? Did y'all notice that? Hmm? There was a reason why. Yo, Dannon, thank you, Bajari. Dan and Yogurt. <laughs> Tracy Owens, okay? Did y'all notice that? I, I should have I should have pulled out my whiteboard. I may have to do it tomorrow. Because you got to study the Bible by understanding two different types of people. That's the Jew. Then that's the Gentile. That's the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven used interchangeably. And the body of Christ, the Gentile. If you don't separate it, this is why you're easily manipulated. Because y'all keep using what's called replacement theology. And wherever that what that means is, wherever you see Israel, you put the church in there. That is a dangerous, dangerous theology. To put church wherever Israel is, that's why your churches are jacked up today and God shut them down. He said, I'm going to send the pestilence and shut the churches down because y'all ain't getting it. Y'all ain't getting it. So Jesus preached on the kingdom. Why? It was to the Jews. Paul says, all right, now that Jesus is gone, and he lives within us. He, cre he What he did was he started the church and it became the body. You didn't really hear about church, church, church during uh, the time that Jesus was on the earth. You just didn't hear about church, 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 church. You didn't. You just heard about kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. When Paul came on the scene, church, 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 church. I wonder why. And then Jesus mentioned Adam and Eve. He always went back to the beginning. When Jesus on earth, he would say, have you not heard? Did you not read? Don't you understand? He don't say that to Gentiles. Why? Because the law wasn't given to them. Why? The Torah wasn't given to them. The Pentateuch wasn't given to them. So when he would talk to a Jew, he would say, have you not read? Do, do you not? Did you not hear? Blah, blah, blah. But if he had talked to a Gentile or something like that, then he would go way back to Adam and Eve. Maybe you heard the story. So what happened in Adam and Eve's story? Adam was here, put here to live his life fancy free. He was alone. God gave him a woman, put him to sleep. And out of his side, he pulled that woven man out. And he called them both Adam. That's why every woman in here got a man's last name. Carter is a man's name. Pitts is a man's name. Aiken is a man's name. Bell is a man's name. It's not a woman's name. You got Adam's name. Rogers is a man's name. Taylor is a man's name. Owens is a man's name. You got a man's name, Stoudemire. Do you understand? That's why Eve was called Adam. That was what the scripture says. And they both were called Adam. Get it? All right? And then they did what they did in the garden. But Adam messed up. He wasn't deceived. The Bible says that she was, but he knew what he was doing. And then God had to deal with him. Casey, that's right, Casey. It's a man's name. 
Okay? Adam messed up. So guess what God had to do? He had to recreate an Adam so that this Adam can finish the work. And guess what Jesus is called? Can y'all put it in the comments? Who is Jesus called? What do they call him? What did Paul call him as it pertains to Adam? Somebody. Somebody. <laughs> Majority said, it's a man's world. <laughs> Somebody tell me. In anybody. What do we call Jesus? If you tell people that and they call you a yeah, hyper, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Second Adam Cortez says, Thomas, your second, yes. Uh-huh. Tracy, not the first Adam. <laughs> second. Second or last. He's the second or the last Adam. Why is he called an Adam? And why is he not called another Adam? The Bible refers to him as two things. He's the second Adam, which means there may be a third. So then the Bible says, well, he's the last Adam. Y'all understand? To finish the work. So what did he do? God gave Jesus a bride too, like he gave Adam. He put Adam to sleep. He put Jesus to sleep too. Jesus died on the cross. And that centurion soldier pierced him in the side just to make sure he was dead. What came out of his side, y'all? Can you tell me? Intebate. <laughs> what came out of the side of Jesus? Intebate. Yes, come on, Pandemic Pam. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody? What came out of his side? Blood. Okay, blood and what? Don't say blood and guts. <laughs> what came out? Come on, word, mama. Blood and water. Blood and water. Blood and water. Woo, blood and water. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. Blood and water. And that water represents something, y'all. We already know what the blood represents, but that water mixed in there. Y'all know that water and blood don't mix. Y'all know that, right? Man, this is too deep. This is too deep. The prophets don't come this way with you. So out gushing, God then began to create the church out of the side of the last Adam. And then what did he do? Okay. Because the Holy Spirit has, it, it, there's many symbols to the Holy Spirit. Water is one symbol of the Holy Spirit. What else is a, is a symbol of the Holy Spirit? I'm asking you all these questions because I want to see which one of y'all keep getting deceived so much by these prophets. Can y'all tell me? We know that water represents the Holy Spirit. What else represents the Holy Spirit? What other symbols that you can think of represents the, uh, the lulabee? There it is. Worth, yep, fire. All right, the lulabee says wind. Fire. Belinda says oil. Yeah, come on, but Jerry says dove. Y'all are preaching. Y'all are preaching. You preaching. You're preaching. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all tight. Y'all tight. And what is what is what is wind? What is wind? And when you study in the Holy Spirit, remember I did that show on um systematic theology? And I talked about all of these uh, systems, but what was the study of the Holy Spirit? What is that word? Can y'all tell me? Because you, you said when, but what is that word? Mm, the Lula B. Lula, Lula, you, you're killing me. You're killing me. There it is. Mm hmm. Numa. And Numa means what? Michelle, you got it. Mm-hmm. So Adam, when he was being formed, what did God do into Adam? Can y'all tell me? What did God do into Adam as he was formed? 
Into body. Into body. What was God doing into Adam? Come on, class. Y'all. Y'all are. I ain't got no money to get to y'all. What was he? What did what did God do into Adam? Hmm. Hmm. Lula B. Listen, you sit at the back of the class, all right? Cause you're too smart for this class. We are gonna give you a double, all right? Yes. Water signify redemption, blood, and the impartation, imparting that is of life. Yes. He breathed into him. He breathed into him. He breathed in him. Yes. All right. He breathed into him the breath of life quicken all right that's what the king james say quicken all right now then jesus when he was talking to the disciples what did he do over them and he said something what did he do over them like what god did into adam what did jesus did over the disciples hmm Mama Brewer, good to see you. So honored, so honored. Hmm? What did he do over the disciples? Yes, Priscilla. Yes, yes. Lemuel. Yes, same thing. Yes, yeah. Come on. Can't y'all see the connection here? Who would make say that this is a boring book? Y'all get caught up in these love novels and, and, and Netflix and chill, but the Bible is full of so much life. Yes, there you go, Pandemic Pam. He breathed on them again y'all like how many times did he breathe on them he breathed on them again why because his father breathed on man in the beginning and jesus breathed on them again lord have mercy i don't think y'all get it and he said receive the holy spirit mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes receive all right and then he says it's coming soon don't worry it ain't going to be so many, too many days. It's coming. And what happened in Acts chapter 2? Somebody. What event was it in Acts chapter 2 where the 120 were in the upper room? Okay. What event? It's all it's tied in, y'all. It's all tied in here. Hmm? <laughs> music, I'm in here about to fall out. <laughs> okay, what happened? Acts chapter two. It's nothing like the breath of God. Yes, that's it, Zoe. Pentecost, the sound of the rush. Come on, Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Another wind came. <laughs> Ooh wee! Hey, blessings to you, <laughs> All right, the day of Pentecost was promised to them it was coming understand jesus blew of them and it's like it was just hovering <laughs> and then and then they were filled with him but jesus had to leave in order for pentecost to happen as long as pentecost uh, jesus was here he was holding up that event now pentecost it comes as how many days, y'all? How many days does it come right after the uh, Passover? Huh? You gotta go get a little old te or go to the Old Testament. So Jesus Christ had to leave. He says, "This town is not big enough for the both of us. So I'm gonna send you a comforter, a gift. I'm gonna hang around for a, for a, a, a forty odd days, but I got to get out of here." So they they're seeing they're wa they're watching him and watching him and he began to ascend. And the two angels, the same angels who was there at, at, at the sepulchre, the two angels keep popping up. They keep popping up. Priscilla, uh, uh, Stephanie, blessings. Thank you for the super chat. All right. And then the angels looking at these guys, looking at Jesus, go up and they said, hey, "Why are you sitting here gazing? That same Jesus who is going up." He's coming back down. Don't worry. And he came back down, but in the form of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. Now, they were pretty much saying he's going to come back down physically later on. But he sent his representation. Ooh, to the we. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit fell on the women and the men in, in the upper room. 
And so the Holy Ghost dwells in us. It, he didn't leave. And I know y'all been ta- teaching about tearing on the altar all night long and asking the Holy Ghost to come. Well, the Holy Ghost didn't leave. <laughs> you just ask him to fill you. So you don't have to, you don't have to ask him to come from heaven. He's already here. We just was taught, you know, the, the, the old saints just didn't know. So we can't beat them up as if it left and then come back. Now he's here. It's just that now you need him to feel you. So they meant good. Uh, that Terry on the altar kept, kept a lot of us saved. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So they meant good. So we can't keep beating up the old saints. All right. So then the apostles are now doing their work. Jesus didn't talk about that work. No, he spent more time talking about the tribulation. You get it? Okay. Somebody asked me a question about the pre-trib or the mid-trib, all right? Now, the saints are gone. Foop! Some of y'all are going to be left behind. And if you don't, be careful. A strong delusion is going to happen, and you will be deceived. Who's going to be doing a lot of this deceiving? It ain't always the devil. It ain't always the Antichrist doing deceiving. God himself is going to be doing stuff that you're going to be like, God is doing that stuff? Yeah. I'm sorry to tell you, he keep giving you an opportunity to repent, and you won't do it. So God got to do stuff to get your attention. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. This is this is too much for me. It's too much. Uh oh. Yeah, this it's, it's too it's too much. <laughs> I don't know where to go. <laughs> I I don't I don't. I guess what I'll do is. Um. Man, it's it's all First Thessalonians and Second Thessalonians. I would love to do a whole show on this. Um, let's see. Uh, the for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now let us will let until he be taken out of the way. Many of y'all were told that the Holy Ghost will will, will be removed. You were taught that the Holy Ghost will be removed. And then the Antichrist will come. And then there will be seven years of tribulation. There's a problem with that. He says, "He uh, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Uh oh. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send the strong delusion. Who's going to send it? Not the Antichrist, not the devil, not the false prophet. God himself is going to send a strong delusion that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Here's the problem with the bad interpretation that we've been hearing for many years. Number one. They said that the Holy Ghost would be removed and then the Antichrist will come and then seven years tribulation. Well, how can man be saved during the tribulation without God's spirit? We have what's called tribulation saints. It's not just 144,000. Notice John said he saw a number that what? Hmm? That's right, the Lulabee, the Lulabee, just like the hardened Pharaoh hearts. Yes. But John saw a number that what? And it wasn't the 144,000 that he was talking about. How can they be saved without the Holy Spirit? So God draws men 
to Jesus Christ. And you can't call Lord Jesus Lord except through the Holy Spirit. So that that's a misinterpretation of the, of the text. A number that no man can number. So where all these people come from? How did they get saved without the Holy Spirit on the earth? It's impossible. What's keeping us here now? Jesus left and had to send the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine Jesus leaving the disciples and sending no one? This world will be so wicked you couldn't survive. So the Holy Spirit sits, will, will stay on the earth. Then the delusion will come. But notice verse 12. So the second bad interpretation is that uh, though everybody will be a delusion so you won't make it if you if you um, miss the rapture and left behind that you won't make it and that's it for you that is false that is incorrect you don't want to miss the rapture but if you miss it and you're into the tribulation your life then will be very hard because in comes the whole mark of the beast situation. And you can't buy, you can't sell, and what have you. And then you got to be beheaded, and it goes on and on and on, all right? But notice what 12 says, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's, that's a reference to Romans chapter 1, who were filled with unrighteousness, and then the, uh, God turned them over to a reprobate mind. That didn't apply to everybody because if this scripture says everybody will be deceived, how are there's going to be a number that no man can number who will receive Christ in the tribulation? Can't y'all see how backwards backyard preaching and teaching that was? The Bible interprets itself. It makes sense. It answers its own questions. It solves its own problems. So when you keep listening to these prophets and bad teaching, you get deceived because you haven't read it for yourself. Understand? So I will be doing a series on Revelation very, very soon. I'm getting, I've been writing notes like crazy. And I may have to go every day on it. Okay? I may have to try my best to release something every day on Revelation because it's just uh, the, 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 uh, Jesus told us to encourage one another with this, but nobody's preaching from Revelation. I must not nobody, but many in your circles. Every time you go to church, you uh, uh, when when especially pre-COVID, it was always some cute story about uh, the three Hebrew boys and uh, prosperity messages and, and messages on on giving and tithing and and messages uh, on it's your season. And, uh, I decree and I declare and enlarge your territory and I know the plans I have for you and all, oh, all oh, oh, I saw you here, I saw you here, all oh, here, and and you don't in the black church especially hear about eschatology. You don't hear about end time. You don't hear about revelation. You don't know. You don't even know who the minor prophets are. You never read from Zechariah. You don't even know what it says. You never read from Ze uh, Zephaniah. You never read from it. And the only time you read from Amos is when you want to pick that one scripture out of there. Okay, dealing with the, the uh, God don't speak to nobody but the prophet. The prophets will bring that out, okay? And this cute little here and there uh, stuff. You bring that up, but nobody's preaching on end times in the black church. Why? Again, I'm not saying nobody. <laughs> At large. We're not hearing about it. One, I hate using Daniel and Joseph to justify uh, uh, what filling with politics. Ooh, man. A mule. Man. Amos and Obadiah. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Out of bridge. Come on. So that's the problem in the church. You know. Now. So when I get into Revelation, I'm going to show you where I believe who the mystery Babylon is. Who's the great harlot? I believe. 
I know who it is. What is 666? Well, I'm going to give you my opinion. Because that's all you can give. In Williams, I don't mean to bust your bubble, and I'm sorry. America is not here. America is not in prophecy, in the Bible. People try to push America all through here, but it's not. I know what it is because the Bible gives you a clue on who Mystery Babylon is. One scripture, one, gives you a hint on who Mystery Babylon is. You can only find it in one place. Outside of that, the 666, the only thing you can do is give an opinion on it. All right? Now, everybody tries to push America in there because they need it to be in there because we love our country. But I'm sorry. I believe that something so destructive was going to happen with us that we can't survive. 2020 was a hint. It was a hint. America is imploding like Rome. She's imploding. She's nowhere to be found. She's got to assimilate assimilate in order to survive. So she's not there. You've been you can you can try and talk about these, the airplanes and, and gathering up the Jews and on wings of eagles and we, we've been pushing all this the the Tarsus uh, from the West and we've been pushing all that stuff and all of that can be explained <laughs> all of it can be explained all of it and none of it is leading to America none and I can prove it now. The Antichrist is going to set up a new religion. And there's some bad books out there who's saying that the, uh, the Antichrist is going to be a Muslim or he's going to come from Islam. He will not. He's not coming from America and he ain't coming from Islam. Why? Because of what the Bible says he's going to do. Look over there in Israel right now. or well, what we call Israel. Look over there right now. Look at the Dome of the Rock. And look at the fight that you can't cross this line. There's three religions on the earth. Can y'all tell me with three religions? <laughs> In Williams, I love you. <laughs> You cheating. <laughs> you cheating. There are three religions on the earth. Can y'all tell me what the three religions are? And I and I gotta go. I the clock keeper has spoken. I gotta go. What are the three religions? In Williams, that's it. Christianity, Judaism, Islam. Jewish, Islam, Christianity, y'all saying it different ways to fire. Yep. Okay. So Christianity will survive. Judaism will survive. But Islam will die. I'm sorry to break your bubble if you are part of Islam. Islam will die. She will not survive. Esau will not survive. God says, Jacob I love, Esau I hate it. Islam will die. She won't survive. Why? Because of what the Antichrist does. There's a woman in Revelation as well. But where the Antichrist 
will be sitting and what the Antichrist will create. I ask y'all, what are the three religions? The Antichrist will set up a fourth one. But that religion will supersede. And it will turn in to two. The Antichrist religion and Christianity will be the last two religions left. What did I say? Yeah. Yeah. Al Alberg. Isaac. And Ishmael. That's it. That's them brothers over there. <laughs> Tawan said, you just crushed him. <laughs> yeah. I can prove it. <laughs> I, I can prove it. Now, I can prove it, but you don't have to believe it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Islam will not survive. So if you're in, if you're, if you're Muslim and you and you are, you are studying or worshiping under Islam, your time is short. I have Muslim brothers and sisters out there, black and Eastern. I love them, but I ain't scared of them. Now they respect me because they know who I'm all, who I'm all about. And I know who I serve. They know what I feel about what they're doing. And I know that's a dangerous religion to be in because there are men who lost their lives because they were playing around with the Muslims and making cartoons out of their gods and stuff like that. I ain't that crazy. I don't disrespect religions. I just don't do it. I just ignore it. And I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. But you're not going to survive. So enjoy it while you can. Because your time is winding up. The Antichrist is getting ready to overtake. How is he going to do it? I don't know. Is he going to wipe you out? I don't know. But you're going to give up and give allegiance to him. And he's going to create a new religion. Why? Because the tribulation is about Jesus settling a, a bet <laughs> with his brothers. And if you are a Muslim or you are an Islam, you are in the way. Because Jesus needs to settle a matter with his brothers. So he got to remove. And it's a whole bunch of Islam, uh, Muslims out there. It's a whole bunch of them. Do y'all know what the number is? Because there's about 7 billion people on the earth. But y'all have to remember this one thing that we didn't talk about. The war of Gog, Magog, Tubash, and Rosh. And Russia. Russia is going to be the last man standing. Okay? That war right there is going to happen before the tribulation. I believe the, the rapture will happen. Then Ezekiel 38 will come on the scene. And that's going to be a crazy war. And that's where God is going to settle up with the Muslims. I'm giving y'all a precursor. God's going to settle up with the Muslims in Ezekiel 38. And it's going to be so bad that it's going to take the Israelites. How many? Could take them about a month or so to bury the dead. The blood is going to be so high that the Bible says it's going to be up to the, the to the bridle of the horse. That's how high the blood is going to be. It's going to take them uh, weeks, and then they're going to beat their their swords and 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 plow into plowshares or whatever that verse is. Okay. And then they're going to go into peace because there's going to be a deal made with the Antichrist and them. And he's going to sit in the temple, which means there is no Islam. God's going to have to settle up with them. He's got to settle up with Ishmael in Ezekiel 38. Bodies everywhere. And almost 2 billion.
million people will die. And who are they? That's a lot of people. The Lion of Judah roaring. Come on. He got to settle up the score with the Muslims and get them out the way because he got to settle the score with his brothers. Man, let me tell you. Revelation chapter 6, the first seal opens and one and a half billion people will die. God's got to settle up a score. If you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sin, may I make a suggestion? Hmm? Can I make a suggestion? Or maybe you already know what the suggestion is. Because you really don't want to be a part of none of that. You really don't. We don't know when it's coming. Which is, which, which should really freak you out because you don't know when it's coming. <laughs> All these prophecies about, you know, December 31st is going to be the end of the, this and then. Y'all keep, for a hundred years, we, we keep hearing about these false prophets. All right. Jesus himself don't know when he's coming. He don't know. If he don't know, how y'all know? He said himself, the son of man, I don't know. Only my father know when I'm coming. I go to prepare a place for you. And where I am, you can be also. They like, well, we don't know where you're going and how can we get there? Oh, you wicked generation. Evelyn, no. The seal, <laughs> my thing froze. No, the seal has not been opened. There are no... Uh, the the horses of the apocalypse have, is, has not started to ride. You are not in the tribulation. No. You're still in the dispensation of grace and enjoy it while you can, but tr do your best to try and win and witness to as many people as possible because you want people to come to the party. There's a wedding getting ready to go on, and so what I suggest y'all do is uh, get out some wedding invitations. You understand? Invite people to your wedding. How do you do that? Witness to them and invite them. Tell them they can come. And all they have to do is confess. And they can come to the wedding. And here's the thing. They don't have to sit in the back row and in the pews when they come to the wedding. Because they are now the bride like me. Wait a minute. You invited me to your wedding. Yes. But it's going to be yours too. <laughs> yeah. So we having a, a multiple marriages. Yeah. It's going to be a number that no man can number. What church is that? Oh, it won't fit in the building. The sky is the limit. I got to go, y'all. If you enjoyed the show, go ahead and take your thumb and... Uh, Smash the like button if you're on YouTube and share, 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 share wherever I go. Share, all right. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and share with so many as much as you can. It's still about 120 of y'all still here. Well, praise God, it's on. It's about 12:30 almost, 12:21 in, in on the East Coast. Wow, y'all still here? Well, I'm done, and I've got to find a way to apologize to uh, the clock keeper because she's been ringing bells <laughs> for the past <laughs> what 30 minutes. Bruh, bruh, <laughs> bruh. All right. There you go, Belinda Hill. Repent. Ain't that something? Repent. It's an action word. That means turn around. <laughs> don't do don't do a 360. We didn't know numbers when we were coming up. Do a 360 and the Lord will save you. Well, if I do a 360, I didn't change. <laughs> we didn't we were bad at math back then. I love y'all. And ain't nothing you can do about it. God, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for the word of God. I thank you for eschatology. I thank you for the end time. I thank you, O oh God, for the testing. And I thank you, O oh God, that you got to settle a score. With thank you for rescuing me and pulling me out so that y'all can settle. And when you're done and you cleaned house, 
No more water, but fire this time. You're just preparing the place for me. New heaven, new earth. And I'm coming back with you, with my brothers and sisters. And forever we shall be with you. And we'll rule and reign supreme here on the earth. And we will judge the angels as well. Thank you, God, for having grace on me and not allowing me to be blind, deaf, and dumb to the gospel. It's the power. And it saves men's souls. Thank you for dying for me. What would I do without you dying on the cross? In Jesus' name. Amen. Tony Brasher, so good to see you, man. I missed you. It's been so long since I've seen you. So long. So good to see you. Give my love to everybody down there. Millions didn't make it, but I was one of the... Ooh, wee. Come on out of bridge. <laughs> That's good stuff, man. All right. I love y'all. Um, Tomorrow? What's tomorrow? Tuesday? I, I can't keep up with the days. All right. I may have to continue in this vein. You want me to continue in this vein? Because I, I, I had a show prepared, a relationship show prepared. Already, I was going to talk about why do people go ghost? Why do men go ghost on women? <laughs> I was going to talk about that. I was going to talk about that, man. I was, ooh, I was ready. And then uh, the spirit says, no, you're not. I sat here and was getting ready to go live. My notes is right here. Let's talk about that. And the spirit says, no, you're not. And Brian Kahn came on. And then God says, deal with that. <laughs> so you got to rewind the show and see how God dealt with that. All right. Have fun, y'all. I'm going to get something to eat. Rub baby girl's belly. And see what imagination does she have. Because that baby's coming in about two, three more weeks. And I'm still trying to remodel the rooms and stuff like that. So uh, bless the mind of God, if you like. I want to thank many of you were a blessing to me yesterday. Thank you. I, I wasn't expecting that. Where's Keys? What's Carolyn Keys? Is she there? Carolyn Keys. Woo, my God. Um, so thank y'all because I love my daughter. But this new baby is coming. And that baby, I don't know if he going to steal baby girl's time from me. Or if I'm going to steal the baby from baby girl. I'm not sure which one is going to be. All right. Because when my first grand boy was born, he better be glad. They, his parents better be glad he lives in Atlanta, Georgia. Because they wouldn't see much of him. <laughs> oh, no. They would not see. They would be like, Dad, you over here again? Yeah. Okay. How long are you going to be? Well, I'm, I'm leaving, but I'm leaving with my grandson. Best you be. <laughs> okay so a baby's gonna be born in my house in a few more weeks I haven't had that to happen in 26 years and well let's just say she's gonna be a good mother but she's not gonna see much of me <laughs> good night y'all peace well, good, good, goodbye Fellas, does it seem like you can't get a good woman? Ladies, wonder why you can't keep a man? Then read The Four Women That Men Desire, Volume 1, by Sir Walter Jones to figure out how to break the cycle. Go to Amazon.com to get your copy today.